Well, what is up, everybody, and welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. Um, once again, back for another shitty show, of course. And, whew, we're all not a tough one to get through. Uh, Mick Foley, who continues to cut his hair, which pretty much now looks like a buzz cut. And, I don't know why Foley keeps cutting his hair. He looks like a whole different person. His haircut looks almost... Was it really that short back in 01 or 02, really, when... He was Commissioner Foley on Raw because he just looks really different and skinny now. I, I guess that's what that DDP yoga does, but I know he still needs that hip surgery, but Foley with the buzz cut. And it was pretty much him and Stephanie, which you'll see a lot of them those two throughout the night, about rumoring The Undertaker was going to be there, which doesn't make sense. And I would get on there in a second because there's a lot of the word rumor and produce tonight. As Foley said, he had a strong feeling he would be there. And, and a strong feeling. Which doesn't make sense because you advertise for the Undertaker to be here next week. Well, tonight, really. So, what do you mean rumor or produce? Like, what rumor are you in the Undertaker is going to be here? We knew the Undertaker was going to be there because you said it last week the Undertaker was going to be there. But Seth Rollins came out here tonight saying he was entering the world under the match. Of course, he would. And Strowman came out here saying he wanted. Well, Goldberg or Roman Reigns, and he says Goldberg, Foley well, said Goldberg wasn't even here, Ron says, you know, I got Strowman, and pretty much then, they pretty much started punching each other, and the referees had to break him up, and Stephanie told Foley, you get this under control right now, and you make sure the Undertaker comes here tonight. Well, as Roman Reigns came out, pretty much getting booed out the building, which was ready for the Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for the U.S. title. Which, as soon as that match began, uh, Strowman came out and Roman tried to go for all three of them because, you know, that made Roman Reigns look strong. And they pretty much all three of them started jumping Roman Reigns. So, Seth Rollins came out to help, started hitting everybody with a chair, and then him and Roman started hitting Strowman with a chair. And as Stephanie came out to me and saying, like, we're not going to do Raw this way, Roman, you can rest up because tonight you will have your U.S. title match. There won't be any excuses in this handicap match. And it's going to be Strowman versus Jeff Rollins, even though we saw this match literally two weeks ago on Raw. Uh, match was good. It was just there. And then don't double count out because, you know, you can't have Strowman take a pin or anything right now. So, once again, uh, like I said before about Strowman in the past, I said this last week with the Sami Zayn match. Still, it's him throwing, punching, and kicking. Throw, 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 throw. But he does look big and everything, I know he looks like a monster, but after, the, pretty much after the double count out, Strowman got a jail, can hit Rollins with the Rollins, I'll say one thing about Rollins real quick, getting in the ring, I don't know if I could do a van, a, a van damn in, in the ring, when they did this segment earlier at the beginning, and he threw the chair at Strowman, which is why he's getting called Triple H, so he pretty much took a chair and started swinging it at Strowman and knocking him back, saw Shin Bailey, talk about the title shot, and Charlotte walked in saying that Charlotte never beat her at pay-per-views, but Sasha has already beaten you. Until Nia Jax showed up and kicked Sasha in her bad knee. And then her and Charlotte jumped her and Bailey, and then Charlotte was like, alright. And patted Nia Jax on the back, but Nia Jax on the back there into the wall then. So at least she isn't just teaming up with Charlotte just because. Uh, Jack Gallagher went against Drew Gulak. Uh, wasn't much to say or anything about this. Gallagher won, and he pretty much said he was going to face Davari and give him a thrashing at this parlay tomorrow night on 205. So, wasn't much of him saying it's going to be a parlay tomorrow, almost like the duel, but it's going to be a parlay, I believe it is, tomorrow night on 205. I'm um, tired of the show anyways. Foley was looking for The Undertaker, so he has to produce The Undertaker tonight. Produce him, and this is going to go on throughout half the night of him producing The Undertaker for some reason. So I, I really didn't understand where they were uh, going, going with that, of producing The Undertaker, since he's going to do that. Uh, next was probably the longest and maybe one of the most boring segments throughout the night was The Undertaker, not Undertaker, but Shawn Michaels 
Shawn Michaels came out and he talked about the Royal Rumble. And he just did a lot of bad jokes really throughout the night between him and uh, him coming out there and he talked about his new movie. I told him he won the Royal Rumble almost 20 years ago, but now it's in his hometown of San Antonio. His fan channel, one more match. He says, Don't you pressure me, kids. I'm going to stand up for peer pressure and stuff. And he's here to speak. Well, mostly Shawn Michaels is there to promote his movie. Just whatever, Gavin Stone, the Resurrection, and talked about it was a comedy, which kind of went on for a minute. We're going to talk about his movie. And his first acting job until Rusev and Steroid Mahal right there. I don't know if this guy's in shape, but he's a walking drug test, walking um, wellness test. The guy looks like a fucking steroid out there. As him and Jinder and Lana came out and said they should use CGI in the new Star Wars film. He's the new Bulgarian. And let me say this also with a lot of joke references they did tonight. That him and Charlotte pretty much went on to talk about Emma Stone and Golden Globes. I didn't even watch the Golden Globes or anything. But I don't know how many awards that whatever La La Land movie won. I heard it was a lot of wins. But there was a lot of references to that. Or maybe Meryl Streep's speech. I, I don't I don't know when I get into it. That's what I see on the news. But they this this segment just went on too long. Which even Enzo and Cass were even got involved at one point. And when Enzo and Cass Enzo and Cass were out there I'm trying to check something. Enzo and Cass were out there that they were talking about pretty much Rusev and making penis pianist jokes and so you you can't say that man, you can't say this. It. like a kid in the building, right? Since um, Enzo's leg is still hurting and he's in the I don't know if his knee injury is real or not, he's just doing the wheelchair thing just because of a motor scooter and he thought he's got some haters, got some haters, together some haters and everything and he just went on and on with this segment with nearly half an hour to be honest it was just going and it didn't look like it was any of these guys were being funny like Shawn Michaels was just trying to be funny as he could but it wasn't working and they just went on to talk about movie references and into a cast song about Rusev on Dumb and Dumber, Three Stooges, uh, the pian like I guess the pianist thing. And Into a cast pretty much said all three of them was soft. And Shawn Michaels went on to say, If you're not down with that, I got two words for you. Suck it. But this whole, this whole segment damn near could suck it, really. Because it just wasn't good. It just went on a while. And then Cass beat Strowman in a very Horrible slam. I don't know if that was his finisher before the elbow, but it looked horrible in botchy. But Shawn Michaels pretty much was even able to, at least he did hit the sweet chin music, so he kicked Rusev into the sweet chin music on him. And we kind of knew that was coming, and some say that Rusev now is just, his gimmick is just now a comedy guy again since Roman kicked the shit out of him. And that doesn't matter in any favors. Once you get destroyed by Goldberg, now Shawn Michaels kicks you in the face. It's like every legend's gonna come back and kick the shit out of Rusev when you look at it. Uh, even after WrestleMania 31, it's stunned by Austin. I'm sorry, 32. Uh, Neville went against Vince Dorado, pretty much with a new theme song. And he pretty much hit the rings of Saturn, a uh, submission move. So, Neville's still going out well. Swan came out for the help. After. But I uh, never pretty much rolled out of the floor then, so uh some will kind of say that Neville I guess doing the submission ring to Saturn will do good because he can't do the red arrow because it's more face moves people are saying people get excited for it. But uh he'll never is usually going out well. Stephanie McMahon still barking at people and pretty much didn't have to, I know I can't say the word emasculate since it's women but Stephanie just does both now emasculates both men and women on the show that, that's what she's been doing emasculate emasculate everybody like just talking about Sasha and Bailey says only one boss around here you're not a hundred percent get the hell out of my office you're doing a tag team match tonight and that's gonna be it you, you guys are pretty much talking about them. 
Luke Gallows ringing Sheamus, Carl Anderson, and Cesaro on commentary. Sheamus being getting the win, bro kick after they were distracted by him. Carl Anderson attacking Cesaro. Never mentioned the bro kicking was over. Roman Reigns, which was so funny, talking about the U.S. Championship, saying like you know because he wasn't he was hurt earlier tonight, and they asked him about it, and he's in the pretty much spear the guts out of Cesaro. This is why this is our Owens and Jericho saying that he defends his title night in and night out. I said, where? <laughs> uh, Foley came to the ring and talking about Undertaker with the depths of hell together and everything. But the need to take a trip to the dark side here in New Orleans. And he's been doing it for 32 years. And so the lights went out and Stephanie came out. Pretty much blaming everything on Nick Foley for Raw. Just shitting on him. Which has become a common thing with Stephanie. Saying you had some good ideas, but you let SmackDown beat Raw in the ratings. You let this happen. You let that happen. And she was gonna say, "We'll take your performance review now, which they took as a show of performance review," which I don't think people really cared that much where this was going. Because I'll say this right here: New Orleans was dead tonight, and this crowd was supposed to be for WrestleMania 34. This whole damn crowd. When Shawn Michaels came out, Shawn Michaels barely got a reaction. I'll say that right there. His entrance couldn't even say anything. I thought they were going to be quiet through the whole segment, which half this crowd was. Neither throughout the show tonight. But when Sean came out and he barely like got a no reaction from him, like, holy shit, this show was horrible. It was usual. But then again, Raw is shit. But when the crowd is dead for a legend returning, that's not helping. But Undertaker came out saying, I'm back. You know, we saw you about two, three months ago on some SmackDown talking about digging souls and taking digging holes and taking souls and stuff. We saw you on SmackDown back in November. And he pretty much said it, which is mostly the most important news of this tonight, was him entering the World Rumble. And he says, I will main event WrestleMania. The streak did come to its demise. But he was dug 29 holes and 29 souls. He will bring to the dark side of the Rumble match. He is going to win the Royal Rumble. He will once again return to the main event of WrestleMania, even though he said WrestleMania doesn't define him anymore, but if he wants to go main event WrestleMania again, in which they really made sure Braun Strowman was looking, and it looks like they really want to go with this idea for Strowman versus Undertaker, but I don't even know why this, I, I feel like this match is not going to go out well, I get Strowman, they're building up to be a monster, I understand that, it's been pretty good lately, but he's a very limited move set, and I don't know if Undertaker's going to carry him through this whole match. So, I don't know where it's going to go, and we got some strong favorites in this Rumble. So, Undertaker did say he will be in the Royal Rumble, and that is a big name to be in the Rumble. I don't know what number he'll be, but he will enter the Royal Rumble, and he said he is going to return to WrestleMania and main event it. And no one tells him, but the Undertaker says, I do what I want when I want to, because I'm the Undertaker. Pretty much like, fuck you, I'm the dead man. I'm in the Royal Rumble. I'm main event. I'm going back to main event WrestleMania. Um, the comedy team of Owens and Jericho talked about they were national treasures, international treasures, and they should be the face of Raw. Charlotte and Nia Jax went against Bailey and Sasha Banks, which was very odd in this match for Bailey to take the pin. If she just won the number one contendership last week, but tonight she's taking the pin. Which is very strange to me. I don't know why, but something about that was very odd. It's kind of odd. And she's going to be challenging for the title soon. And pretty much the person that beat her was the person she beat last week. So they really didn't do anything for Charlotte and Bailey to type the title match. But very odd for Bailey to take the pin. Uh, Norm Dury, Alicia Fox, as he does Fox. Pretty much, he's still going after her, which I think he's still having a match tomorrow. And Alicia Fox gave him this weird, aggressive kiss and says, She says, Cedric was right. Uh, you can't handle a real woman. I don't know where they're still going with this. This cruiserweight division is not going anywhere. There's too many ass matches at the time. Ain't doing shit in 205. There's just people dead out there walking out the crowd. I saw only saw one good at those shows. I saw it. One of the other shows, and that was it. And that was when Swan won the title. When Tajiri came out there last week, no, nobody didn't give a fuck. 
what he did. They, 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 they did not give a fuck about the Jerry coming back. And I like the Jerry, but he just got no, no reaction. And speaking of another bad segment, let's talk about the New Day coming out, which they have nothing to do. With Tyrus O'Neill trying to sing, it goes down in the DM. Which just wasn't good. And he pretty much says, he was in the ring. The five guys were attacking Woods. And Kofi King's up there to play the footage of the, uh, um, or, uh, uh, footage of the old NXT, the old NXT, which was a god awful show, which was nothing with these retarded competition show. Not the NXT we all know, no one loved today really, but the bullshit show of the old NXT of him saying a lot of winners a win and carrying that keg around. And Kofi, God, this is gonna sound weird. Is that? Um, He said this, that what's in this keg is booty juice. Booty juice. It makes sure your, your throat ain't loose or something. What the fuck is booty juice? Come on now. That just sounds lame and weird. And I didn't know what to take about that. But like the greatest sports drink is booty juice. What the fuck? I mean, come on. This is, this, this is weird. So... I, I don't I, I don't know where they were trying to go with this. I don't think anybody knew where they were trying to go with this booty juice thing. And then after that, I, I tried to attack Kofi and say it was getting pretty much a match then. And Kofi just went against Titus on you, know, one with the Charlie in Paradise. No one cared. This crowd was so dead. No one gave a fuck about the whole segment. And then it was time to make Roman Reigns look strong against Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. Which, this is where, this is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Was this match good? Yes, it was. But, here's where people, and did I like the cold break into the uh, power bomb to the apron? Yes. Which I damn near thought Roman was going to win this match, but they finally someone to the title off and after he's done nothing for that title in the beginning but he just held around beating the shit out of Owens and Jericho for damn near a month or two and he did win but now this is where the bad part comes in when I saw Chris Jericho win that match well since it's a handicap match it's both of them but Chris Jericho is the champion now when I saw him win that match though the first thing that hit my mind was Roman Reigns is going to win the fucking title at the paper with the Royal Rumble. But at least it won't be as twice as was when he'll just hold two titles just for the fuck of it. Unless they do a rematch next week and Roman gets the title back. Or they do a rematch with the Royal Rumble and gets both belts back in one night. But I did like that Chris Jericho was fine for once in his career. Finally held the U.S. Championship. But the worst thing about this is that when you knew you saw that. Something told me Roman's going to take the, the title at the Royal Rumble. Because notice, Kevin Owens didn't get the win. So Kevin Owens still technically ain't got no win over uh, Roman Reigns, except that one DQ. Roman Reigns got damn near 9, 10 wins over this motherfucker. And he's still, he's like, my God, it took him this long to fucking beat him together after he's kicked the living shit out of both of them single-handedly. Or half the time, both of them, and pinned him. I didn't know that record thing was true. Roman Reigns 9, Kevin Owens 1, and this guy's the fucking champion. You book him like a moron at this point. Kevin Owens has been horrible as champion. So I wouldn't even really be surprised if he does take the belt off of him at the Rumble. Because as soon as I knew he took that U.S. championship off him, something told me he was going to go and win for the, the Universal title at the Rumble. Because they know they couldn't get the two title thing going, so... Like, this one's going to take one title, and it's going to take the title from Kevin Owens, so at least they'll have the U.S. title, but they're going to take that. But, I, I don't know, Raw was damn near another shitty show. I'm sure this was mostly a rating spike, really, just to get something that was competing with a football game, and that's really what it was. Shawn Michaels, do I like Shawn Michaels? Yes, but to him promoting that movie, I don't think nobody gave a fuck who would really watch this. Whatever it is, some Christian movie, I, I don't know. And 
I think Undertaker was just there to be there, and I'm sure people will turn to that because it's him, and he will be in the Royal Rumble match. So the Dead Man will be in the uh, Rumble match itself, and um, that's how it will go out of the Royal Rumble. And let's just add another name to it. So he'll be in it. That was the most one of those newsworthy worthy things tonight. And Jericho won the title, you know, just felt like the crowd just didn't care. New Orleans was just quiet. They would just sit on their hands tonight. It's like they would give a polite response if they wanted to or chant someone's name. But a lot, I don't think the show was over. It didn't get Rothman over, over anyways. I'm, I'm happy to defend this bullshit. I hope the ratings be going low. So just another shitty show. Raw. Fuck them. Whatever. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.